Hi guys, welcome to this revision summary video bringing together all the properties of ionic covalent metallic bonding and how you can take the names of any substance and work out the type of bonding that's going on and bring it all together into the properties and drawing the dot and cross diagrams. This video presumes you know the properties of ionic compounds, you know the properties of simple and giant covalent compounds and you know the properties of metallic compounds. If you don't, there is a link in the top right hand side of this video. Watch that first and then come back to here when you're ready. So we're going to start off with lithium reacting with nitrogen. What I want to be able to do is describe and explain the properties and draw the dot and cross diagram for this compound. Remember the first step then, what type of elements do we have? Lithium is a metal, nitrogen is a non-metal, therefore it must be ionic. It's the only one that contains both a metal and a non-metal. So straight away I can say we have a high melting point. And hopefully you can remember from the video, that's because of the strong electrostatic attraction between the cations and the anions, and lots of energy is needed to break the bonds. I can also say it doesn't conduct when solid, that's because of that strong electrostatic attraction, meaning the ions can't move, but it can conduct when molten, when a liquid, because the ions are now free to move. If we move on to the dot and cross diagram, it's a metal and a non-metal, so it's the transfer of electrons, so I need to know what group they're in to see how many they need to lose. Lithium is in group one, nitrogen is in group five. So I draw my outer shells. Lithium wants to lose one electron and nitrogen wants to gain three. So I start off by transferring my electron from lithium to nitrogen. And as you can see on the right hand side, my lithium is now complete. It's got none in the outer shell, but nitrogen has only got six. So I need another two more. So what I do is I add another lithium on the left hand side, I transfer that electron over, I can draw that second lithium in on the right hand side, as you can see here, which now gives me seven electrons on my nitrogen's outer shell, but I need one more. So one more lithium drawn, transfer the electron across, then I can redraw my lithium on the right hand side, I've now got my three lithium ions complete and my one nitride ion. So my formula is Li3n. On to a second example. This time I'm going to have a look at sulfur and fluorine. What are the properties? Can I draw the dot and cross diagram? Well, both of them are non-metals. If they're both non-metals, it must be covalent. So I'm going to have a shared pair of electrons. So this time I need to figure out the valency. Sulfur's in group six, fluorine's in group seven. Therefore, the valency if you're in group six, it needs two electrons, therefore it can make two bonds, and group seven can make one bond. So I can work out my stick diagram. Sulfur has two bonds, fluorine only one, so I can join fluorine onto sulfur twice, and I'm gonna have my stick diagram looking like this. Draw my circles with my overlaps, put a dot and cross in for every single bond, and then make sure I have eight electrons. Sulfur now has eight, and fluorine's only got two there, so I need to add another six in, and the same on the left-hand side. My formula is therefore SF2. Now when it gets onto the properties, we can see I've only got three atoms, one sulfur and two fluorines. Therefore, it's simple covalent. If it's simple covalent, it has a low melting point and it doesn't conduct electricity at all. The reason it has a low melting point? Weak intermolecular forces. You just have to remember that. If it has weak intermolecular forces, not much energy is needed to break the bonds. Why doesn't it conduct electricity? There are no spare, no delocalized electrons, no electrons free to move. Therefore, it can't carry or pass on a charge. Example number three, diamond. Nice and simply, diamond is giant covalent. You just have to remember that. The other four giant covalent ones are graphite, graphene, and your fullerenes or nanotubes. So with that comes a high melting point. The reason they've got a high melting point is you've got lots of strong covalent bonds. And therefore, again, lots of energy needed to break those bonds. And diamond doesn't conduct, most giant covalent compounds don't conduct. Reason being, each carbon has four strong covalent bonds. Therefore, there are no spare or delocalized electrons. They can't pass on or carry a charge. Obviously, remember, graphite, graphene, nanotubes only make three covalent bonds, so they do conduct. 
but the majority of giant covalent compounds do not conduct for this reason. Example number four, copper is a metal, only a metal, therefore it is metallic. Therefore it has a high melting point. It does conduct electricity and it is malleable. Again, just learn those facts, regurgitate them. Why does it have a high melting point? Strong electrostatic attraction. This time it's between the cation and your negative electron and therefore lots of energy needed to break the bond. Hopefully you're starting to see a pattern here. Why does it conduct electricity? It has delocalized electrons. Those electrons are free to move and they can pass on or carry a charge. And then finally, why are they malleable? Again, you've got your strong electrostatic attraction between your cation and your negative electron. Therefore, your metallic bond is not broken when you push the layers past each other. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.